Uh, good morning or good evening, depending on where you're from. My name is Nivin Suresh. I worked on this project with Soha as my mentor. I chose this topic because at first I didn't know like what the big deal was to get to travel around space. I thought that it was just you put a bigger engine on a rocket ship and it goes farther. But as I uh as I researched on this, I realized that there is much more to to space travel than just speed. Oh, I'm presenting from Troy, Michigan. What is space radiation and where does it come from? As I was researching, I came across three different types of space radiation. Uh, the most common type found in space are GCRs or galactic cosmic rays. These come from different solar systems and galaxies. Our very own sun also produces mass amounts of radiation towards Earth. It's usually a constant uh, fluctuation it goes that comes towards Earth. Uh, these are known as solar wind. But sometimes it'll, like a, you can imagine a rubber band uh, stretching out and then releasing. The same thing happens to the radiation in the sun. It it condenses and, re and releases all at once. This is known as a solar flare. Uh, the third type of radiation also is mainly from the sun. It's known as Van, Van Allen belts. It's basically just trapped radiation. In the diagram on the left, the blue, red, yellow, like the rings around Earth are the Van Allen belts. You can see the galactic cosmic rays coming in from the side and solar flares and solar wind coming in from the sun. A little bit more on solar flares. Um, there's uh, each solar flare is, solar flares are divided up into classes uh, from X, which is the most powerful and A, which is the weakest. It goes from X, M, C, B, A, starting from most to least powerful. Each class is 10 times more powerful than the last. To specify it even further, each after the letter, there will be a number from one to 10, which will show how powerful it is, like even more specifically, unless it's X, X class. Uh, because, the part of, because the particles travel at the speed of light, we only have eight minutes to protect against it. It doesn't directly affect humans, but it will affect electronics and power plants. The most powerful solar flare what recorded was a X-28 solar flare. On the left, we can see that this is uh, three solar flares happening within 24 hours. Um, yeah. Radiation can affect people even on Earth, as we know from solar flares. Uh, even on the International Space Station, the amount of radiation an astronaut absorbs from there in six months is a, is the same as thousands of chest X-rays. When when radiation particles pass through the magnetosphere, if it passes through the magnetosphere, it'll it'll hit other particles in the atmosphere and multiply. On the diagram at the left, we can see how one single particle can multiply into thousands or even or ten thousands. Radiation also affects electronics. There's three main ways. Total ionizing dose or TID, which is basically just a total amount. It accumulates over time. Single event effects, which is a single thing that happens every single time a particle passes through the microelectronic. Uh, there's many different ways. There's many different types of single event effects. Uh, one really common one is single event upset, which basically flips the bit from zero to one or one to zero, because that's how computers are written in zeros and ones. Sometimes it could also destroy the uh, hardware or it'll just mess around with the software. Uh, the third way radiation can affect electronics is displacement damage dose, which is when a radiation atom hits, an, hits a silicone atom it moves the atom and strips off the electro electrons until that atom also becomes a radiation particle. Uh, here are a few diagrams that I drew. Um, on the on the top left, we can see single event effects. This straight line is a single radiation particle passing through the gate and the oxide. Uh, it's it's depositing positive and negative charges into the silicone, which is the blue. Uh, on the bottom left, we can see total ionizing dose. Which is based, which is as many particles are passing through, each one is depositing positive and negative charges into the oxide. 
And displacement damage dose, we can see a radiation particle coming from the left. When it hits when it hits this atom, it it moves it, displaces it, and and turns it into a radiation particle. This entire thing is a sil is a silicon. Uh, in conclusion, the threat of radiation in space is very serious and is blocking our path to the rest of the solar system. There are ways to to protect our spacecraft from it, but most of those are very unreliable or it is very difficult to achieve. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I have some questions from our judges. Uh, so what are some ways astronauts currently try to reduce their exposure to radiation? Um, well, there's different types of uh, clothing, you could say. Uh, if dense materials such as lead uh, can protect against radiation, that's what like that's why the as the spacesuits that astronauts wear are so heavy to protect against to protect from the to protect the electronics from these radiation you would have to put lead all around the spaceship which is very unfeasible because it's very heavy got it so from here what is your next steps in terms of research or other topics that you're interested in exploring? Um, well, first I want to just, I haven't completely finished researching this. Mm -hmm. I still really want to know, um, like, like some more specifics on overall radiation. And if it, if there's more in some areas or less in some areas and we could see why, and if there's a way to just completely deflect radiation, instead of blocking it, then that would even be better. So I think my next steps in research would probably be to see if there's any anything that would um that would deflect the radiation rather than absorb it. Mm, yeah, that'll be a good next topic to explore. Um what did you think was the hardest part of conducting research? Oh, for this topic? This topic mm -hmm. was really difficult because the sources are all like Harvard or like like really advanced topics, like really advanced papers. You would you would have to like really understand the graphs. Like the graphs are really uncommon to see. And I don't half the time I didn't even know the units. So whenever I went into a source to try and find an answer for this, I there was like I had to find more more sources to answer the questions I got from one source. So event so eventually one source would turn into like 10 different sources all at once. So I'm assuming you really learned a lot of new stuff from your yeah. research. That's great. Um, okay, thank you, Naveen. All right, thank um, you.